Uh, however, for the rest of you, Tough Comedy Warriors, you are to be rewarded. Uh, this next comedian is so talented. We're very happy to have him here. Everybody give it up for Nalawi Mengist. So, white devils, how you guys doing? You guys good? Uh, I'm from Ethiopia, and uh, I like being Ethiopian. Hey, hey. Are you Ethiopian too? Nah, my girl. Your girlfriend my, is? My son is. Happy Your son is? Yeah. Oh, okay, hell yeah. I don't know, Ethiopian women are dope. I can't, I can't say anything about that. But yeah, I'm Ethiopian. Uh, and I like being Ethiopian, but like one thing I hate about being Ethiopian is like uh, uh, all the rampant homophobia in the community, right? Like, uh, I remember when I was eight years old, uh, I asked my dad what does it mean to be gay, and he said I knew it, and then just left the room immediately. <laughs> uh, so I went to CU Boulder, and uh, there were a lot of things I liked about college, but like one thing I didn't like was like hanging out with these like out-of-state rich kids, but I had no clue how much money they had, right? And uh, they didn't know how to not be like rude about it, right? Like I remember one time, uh, it was uh, the day after spring break, my senior year of college, right? And I walk into one of my classes, there's these two kids there debating whether Cancun or Cabo is better to snort cocaine in, right? And, uh, and uh, <laughs> this girl I was talking to at the time, she was like telling me about like going to going to Vancouver and going to Seattle and doing all these cool things over there. Then she was like, "Hey, Nalawi, what did you do during spring break?" And I was like, "I did mushrooms in my backyard." <laughs> that trip cost me seventeen dollars, like. <laughs> Another thing I hated was like all the cases of cultural appropriation I'd always see, right? I remember when I was at this house party, right? And I see this white dude walk in, and he has cornrows, and he's wearing a dashiki. Yeah, I didn't like that at all, because like this guy, he's not black, he's not African, like he just doesn't get to wear my heritage like that. Like, that made me so angry, I set my craft beer down on the table next to me. <laughs> Tied up my vans, and uh, <laughs> as soon as I got up, I was like, is it really worth stretching out my skinny jeans just to talk to this dude? <laughs> nah. I'll just go home, listen to some Wu-Tang, you know? <laughs> uh, he, you know I, don't, I don't blame him, though. He's just trying to be woke, right? Like, like I have a lot, like, a lot of like, woke white friends, like those white friends who constantly try to prove to you that they're not racist. And you're like, hey, man, I'm making out with you. Didn't assume so, right? <laughs> like one time I was at my friend, like two weeks ago, I was at my friend's house, I went for the first time. And uh, as soon as I walk in, he just conveniently has the 2015 BET Hip Hop Awards playing on his TV, right? <laughs> and like immediately he's like trying to explain it, like trying to justify it, right? He's like, yeah man, I just feel the like Kendrick Lamar standing on top of that cop car with like this really powerful symbol for police brutality in America, you know? I was getting like mad uncomfortable, like crazy uncomfortable. So I was like, hey man, you got anything else we can watch? And then he was like, hey yo, check it, my TV is lit, fam, right? And he started showing me all these TV shows he's had recorded over the years. But the weird part, it was just like TV shows with just black people in it, right? <laughs> it was like uh, Fresh Prince, uh, Empire, uh, Moesha, uh, The News. <laughs> I was like, hey man, you got anything like Game of Thrones? And he was like, I got the wire. I was like, oh hell yeah, let's watch that. Yeah. On season two. Oh. But it's better than the opposite, right? Like I have like I have a cousin, he goes to the University of Virginia, and I don't know if you guys remember last August, but some terrible things went down there, right? And uh, when I first heard the news, I was freaking out uh, because, like, you know, he was a freshman at dorms at the time. So and I kinda like act and he's like an only child, so I kinda act like his older brother in a way. Right, so uh, next day after I saw the news, I uh, call him up like at like 6 a.m. because I was like freaking out. And I was like, "Hey man, you good?" And then he said, uh, "He said, uh, what happened?" <laughs> and then I said, "There are a bunch of neo Nazis on your college campus carrying tiki torches and screaming really able things about like women, gays, Jews, minorities." And then he said, uh, "He said, uh, a word." <laughs> I was like, yeah, man, I'm dead serious. Once again, are you good? He's like, I don't know, man, I was asleep. And then I hung up the phone. <laughs> this kid slept through a goddamn race riot. Like, do you know how bad I want to be in one of those? Like, that's like a white woman sleeping through a, a farmer's market or something. Like, I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> Why don't white crime is my pumpkin spice latte, you know? Like, it's seasonal. I don't get to see it that often. Uh, I'm a big hip hop head. I like rap music a lot. Uh, favorite rapper is Lil Wayne. Uh, not because he's good, just because he says dumb things all the time, right? And I really enjoy that. Like he has one song where he's like, "I piss greatness like gold is yellow," right? And like, 
when I first heard that lyric, I was like, no, nah, Weezy, you're just dehydrated, man. Like, <laughs> like, put some water in that styrofoam cup. You'll be fine. This other song uh, by P.D. Pablo is called Freak Leak, right? And uh, my favorite part about it is like the hook, because like in the hook, he just like lists every single girl he's ever slept with, right? He's all these cool names like Shaniqua, Chandra, Tamisha, all that. Yeah. I was like, man, if I do the same thing, like make a song and then the hook lists every single girl I've ever had, I've ever slept with, right? It would be like, it'd be like, Emma. <laughs> Platinum in a week, that'd be so dope. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> I don't know, I listen to a lot of mumble rap. Like, that's what I like. I like the new stuff. I, my friends, they always make fun of me for it, but I don't care. The only thing I don't like about these new rappers is like the names of these dudes, right? Cause like back in the day, you used to have like Scarface, like, you know, like Tupac, Dr. Dre, like you would like buy their albums, start listening to it, and you'd be like, oh my God, I'm gonna be dead by track 12, like that scary gangster <laughs> stuff, right? Like, <laughs> like now you have people like Lil Yachty. This took me like three weeks to realize he was talking about a boat. Which is cool, but like, what is a yacht besides a boat? It's a status symbol of wealth. But it is also a depreciating asset. <laughs> so what he's really saying with his name is like, yeah, I have a little bit of money, but uh, I'm gonna be worth nothing in three to five years. Like, <laughs> like, I feel like if he wanted to like, you know, show how much money he had with his name, he'd call himself like, I don't know, like, I don't know, like, little Bitcoin, or like, Young Stock Exchange, or <laughs> <laughs> Big Gentrification, like, <laughs> Let's attack that generational wealth. Oh. I think my favorite, my least favorite rap name lately is uh, NBA Youngboy. Because uh, uh, that's not the whole thing. The whole thing is that NBA Youngboy never be broke again, right? Which is kind of cool because it's, like, <laughs> it's, like, it's like his favorite sport, a nickname, and then a manifesto afterwards. <laughs> Like, that's like me as a comedian being like, NFL comedy boy, never do open mics again. Like that would be ridiculous. Cool, I'm cool. Uh, if you couldn't tell by looking at me, my dad voted for Obama twice. Uh, and the first time he did, it was uh, the first time he got elected and he was, I was about to go to high school. And he was like telling me, he's like, I only voted for him so that you would know, even though you're black in America, even though we're like a family of immigrants, like you can truly do anything in this world, right? Like it was supposed to be like this inspirational thing for me. But uh, I don't know about you guys, I've never been like particularly inspired by Obama. Because uh, like this is a guy who went to both Columbia and Harvard, made out of the south side of Chicago, did like over 10 years of public service. Like he's a way better person than I will ever be. Like he deserved that job. <laughs> That's why I kind of like Trump a little bit. Because that guy did not deserve that job. <laughs> Like, let's look at his resume. No political experience, seduces women like a Street Fighter character. He's <laughs> about to start World War III with North Korea on Twitter and is still president of the United States of America. Like, I look at that guy, I'm like, oh wow, I can really do anything. Huh? <laughs> All right, I'm done. Uh, <laughs> keep it going for Nalawi. All right, well. Earned their attention, you've earned their favor. Oh, cool. What would you like to, to tell them about? What you got going on? Where they, can they follow you, stalk you? Uh, follow me on Twitter. Twitter? Can we see that lower third? Hey, oh. that's my name. That's my Twitter. It's my name. Look at that right in that camera. Oh, yeah, that's my name. <laughs> there you go. Thank that's, you. That's one to send to the, the relatives. All right, thanks. Get one more time. Get up in the Lowy Mengist. Yeah. All right. How's that energy feel? How you feeling? Oh, man. Good, because I, I thought it was just me. I'm very excited for our next guest, our musical guest of the evening. Are you ready to feel? Are you ready to move? Yeah. You've thought. You've processed. Now we don't. You can just. Uh. He had a new album just come out called Full Moon, available 